Hello and welcome back to Crazy Dove Studios. In this video, we will be looking at how to configure the block based backup for a Linux client, and we will also be looking at how to restore a block based backup that was done on the Linux system using Networker. <laughs> So before we jump into how to create the uh, client for a block based backup in Networker, first let's take a look at what are the different packages that are required. So let me do a quick query to the RPM to get this information. And if you look at this, you will see that we have the client package. We have the extended clan package and there is a block based backup package available for Windows separate. These packages need to be installed on the server where you will for which you will be creating the block based backup configuration for. The other thing that you might also would want to consider is that whenever you are creating or whenever you want to configure a block based backup and you are using a logical volume manager in that particular server then there needs to be some space that uh, is allowed to that volume group wherever whichever volume group you want to take a snapshot of or basically a backup of uh, so make sure that there is enough space on that particular volume group or else your backups are going to fail so i'm just going to show you one of that uh, error so once we have completed the configuration so first let's go ahead and do or create a client configuration for a linux system for block based backup again same process under the protection tab i'm just going to go to the group that i have already created for my block based backup on linux uh, i have also created the workflow for the Linux so again it's a simple workflow you have just a group a backup uh, backup action and everything is going to the particular pool uh, this is this has the normal default configuration overall so no much um, customization has been done on the workflow so let's go ahead and create the client now so going back to the group right click say new client visit put in the host name of your Linux server the type will be traditional click on next next it's going to connect to that particular system and it's going to see that there are two applications available we'll be going for file system and then in this particular window for select network client properties you will be selecting block based backup if in case you want parallel save streams uh, you can select it later so we'll come to that once the configuration is completed uh, no other configuration required here i'm going to leave everything as default click next and here again you have the partitions so as you can see these are not the partitions we have only slash boot and slash which is the actual partition uh, for the entire file system uh, we are going to select uh, the complete system so basically all is the save set here uh, if you remember or if you have uh, not checked the introduction uh, video for block based backup uh, block based backup does not support folder level or file level save set so it needs to be either a entire disk a volume or partition so let's go ahead and click next here here is the summary of our selection the client name the save set parallelism block based backup true and client direct so again uh, one more quick uh, point here when you select block based backup you have to always select client direct then create click on create and then finish so now the configuration is done let's go ahead and click or let's go ahead and start a backup for this particular client that started so the backup is going to start in a few minutes 
so as you can see there are two save sets so slash and slash boot so I'll leave uh, this to complete uh, okay it's already completed because it was running a synthetic full let me go ahead and override it so that we have a full backup here as well let's go next next so today is I don't have the date uh, 23rd of October so let's say 23rd of October just to confirm that the date is correct in here as well you can say 23rd of October okay cool let's switch over so 23rd of October will make it a full okay, next and configure go back here and let's start the backup again all right so this should complete in a few minutes so i'm gonna pause the video here and uh, we'll resume once the backup completes there you go the backup is completed and it took under one minute to complete the backup all right so now that our backup is completed let's go and uh, yes I wanted to show you the error related to the file system space so if I go in here and if you look at this particular error here from my earlier run you will see that it was not able to create a snapshot Oh, it was not able to create a block based backup because there was insufficient space in the volume group for creating a shadow of the volume so it requires 100 or 1 gig around so this is uh, this uh, if you face this kind of an error it is basically because your volume group used for the LVM uh, does not have any free space on it so you might have to attach an additional disk and then uh, create a PV but uh, when you are creating the volume group you are not supposed to assign the free space to any uh, logical volumes to be able to use in the operating system so that needs to be kept free so depending on how much is the size of your actual uh, partition that you're trying to uh, back up the free space would depend on that particular number now that we have completed the backup of the Linux system using block based backup let's go ahead and see how we can recover if in case you want to do a file level restore of the block based backup there are a few prerequisites when it comes to Linux system the first being that you need to disable the SE Linux or security in hand Linux by running the commands on your screen right now what this does is it allows the NIST to be enabled and thus uh, allow the data domain to communicate with the Linux host to mount the backup which would then be used to browse the files on the backup and then select whatever you want to restore the second prerequisite here is that the iSCSI admin utility needs to be installed depending on what version of Linux operating system you have you would need to install the respective uh, iSCSI initiator utils this is important because the data domain is going to send the image or the VHD of the backup which is in turn going to be mounted on your client so that it can browse the respective file that you want to restore to uh, and if in case you are on a SLES you, you might have to restart your iSCSI once this installation is done so to restore the backup it is the normal process you go into the recover tab on your networker administrator click on right click and select new recover and in the recovery wizard you select traditional network client recovery 
select the appropriate client in this case it is Linux one and then you will see that you have one file system backup for this particular client or a block based backup for this particular client we're gonna select that and click on next just quickly as the process goes you will see that so this is the machine where uh, I'm doing the restore for so it's Linux one and if we look at the disk you will not see any of the mount uh, backups mounted yet so let's go ahead and try to expand this and get into the respective files so now what is actually happening on the backs back end is that the backup is being mounted on the respective client so okay, let's wait for the operation to complete okay you see that the it has now read all the folders within that particular backup now if I do a DF uh, hyphen KH you will see that there is a new disk attached and this is basically the backup or uh, the VHD from the data domain that is mounted directly on this particular client you could also like, browse this directly as well all right so let's go ahead and restore something so right now if we are looking at this location here uh, it's an empty folder called recovery inside download so we will recover something inside that folder so let's go into oh, sorry home my home directory and then we'll just go into downloads so let's go ahead and start try and uh, recover this particular file from here click on next uh, we'll give it a new destination path because we don't want it to overwrite the original file so we are going to select inside downloads the recovery folder you can select how to handle the duplicate files and then click on next we will say bb block beast backup linux demo and then we'll start recovery so here you will see that the uh, as the backup is already mounted it all it has to do is copy the file over and that is what it is trying to do here and once that is done it is going to complete the recovery and unmount the backup that has been mounted on that particular client so if you see it is copying the file to the destination all right so the destination is completed and it is also mentioning that it is deleting the mount point that has been used for a recovery so let's hop on the particular client and do a and you will see that it has recovered so block based backup usually does restore the entire path of that particular file so in this case it is uh, within the home uh, and that is why it has restored the entire path and this is the file that we wanted to restore and if we look at the mount points now you will see that the mount point that was earlier created for the backup to be mounted is now deleted so this is how we go about uh, doing a backup and restore of a linux client using block based backup thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video i hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments share it with our community in the comment section below or you can drop me a message at my twitter account i will see you on another video Goodbye.